This is item number 39 on the released Spring 2014 Tennessee End of Course Algebra 1 test. The question says the table and graph show the number of cookies remaining in a bakery display case as various hours after the bakery opened for the day. So once the door opens, how much stuff is left? Apparently they only had 32 cookies, so this must not be the most uh, hopping bakery. And of course, it's in the display case, so I guess probably so. If no additional cookies were added to the display case once the bakery opened, what is the best estimate of the original number of cookies placed in the display case when the bakery opened? So what we need to do is get a little bit of a feel for, okay, what kind of changes are they making? And, you know, is it changing by the same amount every time? You know, who knows? So we'll actually look here. I'm not going to try to make it overly complicated, really. I'm just going to see how much it's going up or down by. So 30, when I do it, uh, when I figure this distance out, it's probably a good idea to use the number that's further along. So just do 26 minus 32, and you'll get 6. So it keeps going down by 6. Uh, 21 minus 26 is negative 5. 14 and 21, negative 7. So what I'm actually going to do is expand this out a little bit. I'll go back down here and write the first term. So I want to know, okay, at two hours, at one hour, at zero hours. That's really what I want to fill out. And looking at this, I'd say six is probably the middle amount. So I'm just going to keep where these would be going down, I'm going to add six back. So before the second hour, I'll do 32 plus six and get 38. So what I'm doing is just working on the idea of the theory that it's just going down by 6 every time. And it looks very linear here. So I'll do plus 6 again on 38 and find out it's 44. And I'll do plus 6 again and find out it's 50. So my guess is the original estimate said it's right there. And really, 93 makes no sense. If it's going about the same amount every time, it's not far enough out to where there's like this amazing level of change um, that would make me think it's bumping up. I mean, look at the line. Graphically speaking, if I had a sign of a straight edge, maybe, I might go and sort of make this line, you know, sort of right in there, probably. I think I put the end a little low, so that might be part of the problem. So let me do that. Something like that. And you can see it hits right at 50, so I might just use my pencil to draw a line backwards and see that the answer is 50 here. Could you do a regression in your calculator and um, use that formula? Kind of. M you know, maybe that would be okay. And you'd only need the B value, which is nice. You'd only need the constant term because the x value in it would be zero. Uh, I have some other videos where I do a regression, but I don't think that you would use a regression here. I don't know why you would bother with it. So I'm not really feeling all that excited about doing one. But just go in, punch this into a table, run a linear regression, and then there's your answer. And if you don't know what that means, there's some other videos on the same topic. But if you don't know what it means, I doubt it'll be the tool that you use. So just use something easier. Find out the difference kind of go backwards because you're going back to the original point, you're going back in time and uh, you know, back to the future like Marty McFly. So there it is. It's not overly difficult. It matches with the graphs. Use simple methods. Sometimes it can save you some time and maybe some headache.